Chapter three, a computer in a skirt. Catherine started at NACA in June 1953. The agency was dedicated to flight research. Among other things, NACA engineer, engineers had developed the first aircraft that could fly faster than the speed of sound. Wow, that's pretty exciting. NACA's research work required a lot of complex math. In 1953, electronic computers were not generally used, so research mathematicians, who were often called computers, did the math that the engineers needed. And there is Catherine, a computer in a skirt. Catherine joined a group of about 12 African-American women who were research mathematicians. There was also a group of white American women research mathematicians. The two groups worked and ate separately until the civil rights movement that had started in the 1950s brought an end to racial segregation in 1964. At NACA, Catherine was finally able to see firsthand what a research mathematician did and she loved it. You had a big data sheets with maybe 15 or 20 columns across and 25 lines down, she explained, and he solved those all the way across for days. It was fascinating. Research mathematicians sometimes left the group and worked full time with engineers on a specific project. When the project was done, they returned to the group. Shortly after she arrived, Catherine was sent to work full time on a flight research project. The engineers quickly became impressed by Catherine's math skills as well as her interest in learning as much about the project as she could. Working on the project, Catherine did what she always did. She asked a lot of questions. She knew that the more she understood about the project, the better her contribution to it would be. There's no such thing as a dumb question, Catherine always said. It's dumb if you don't ask it. Because of her intelligence, curiosity, and upbeat attitude, Catherine never returned to the group of research mathematicians. She requested, she was requested on many special projects. See what hard work and perseverance does? Gets you places. Catherine was a valued member of NACA when the agency turned its focus to space exploration in the late 1950s. The United States and the Soviet Union were then the two most powerful countries in the world. The Soviet, so Soviet Union was a former federation of communist republics occupying the northern half of Asia and part of Eastern Europe. Its capital and largest city was Moscow. However, each wanted to be number one, so both the U.S. and the Soviet Union, and that included being the first nation to explore space. In 1958, NACA became the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NASA, which we know, is, know it as today. Its efforts became devoted to what was called the space race. Little did Catherine know at the time just how far she, NASA, and the U.S. and the entire world would go. Chapter 4, Catherine Takes Off. The Soviet Union took an early lead in the space race. In 1957, they launched Sputnik 1. It was the first man-made satellite to successfully orbit the Earth. A satellite is a small object that revolves around a larger object. The U.S. launched its first satellite the following year. The Soviet Union took the lead again when it came to sending a man into space. On April 12, 1961, cosmonaut Yuri Gargarin, a Russian astronaut, it's called a cosmonaut, orbited the Earth aboard Vostok. One, I suppose that's uh, Russian as well. The U.S. followed less than a month later. <laughs> These guys are competing. On May 5th, 1961, astronaut Alan Shepard made a partial orbit around the Earth in Freedom 7. It was required... 
It had required extremely complex and precise mathematical calculations to arrive at the proper flight path for the spacecraft and to keep Shepard safe. Who had done the math? You guessed it, it was Catherine. For her entire career, Catherine insisted that no one person was responsible for any specific achievement. She believed in teamwork. However, she also knew just how skilled she was at math. NASA knew it too. NASA put Catherine on the team that worked to send Friendship 7 and astronaut John Glenn into space on February 20th, 1962. Catherine worked on the tracking system that would predict within two miles where the spacecraft would land after making three full orbits around the Earth. NASA was relying on its first electronic computer to calculate Friendship 7's flight path. John Glenn, however, had more faith in Catherine than in any technology. He insisted that Catherine check the computer's numbers. He said, if she says the computer's right, I'll take it. Catherine worked for a day and a half on the calculations that the computer had done. She arrived at the exact numbers. Catherine's precise spaceflight calculations were not her only unique accomplishments at NASA. Early in NASA's history, only men attended the briefing meetings where spaceflight was discussed. Catherine wanted to be at those meetings and kept asking if she could go. She even asked, is there a law against it? Catherine's persistence paid off. She was eventually invited to attend all brief meeting all briefing meetings, and she participated in the discussions. She was also the first woman in her division to have her name included on a report. The report contained theories Catherine had helped to develop about how to launch, track, and bring back spacecraft. Catherine also became an important member of the team behind Apollo 11. By the late 1960s, both the Soviet Union and the U.S. had landed unmanned vehicles on the moon, but neither had put a person on the moon. Apollo 11 was going to be the first manned spaceflight to land on the moon. On July 16, 1969, Apollo 11 launched and headed to the moon with three astronauts on board. Catherine had computed the path to get them there. The landing and successful return of Apollo 11's flight to the moon made headlines all around the world, and it could not have been possible without Catherine's help. Four days later, on July 20th, 1969, Catherine, along with the rest of the world, watched on television as astronaut Neil Armstrong took mankind's first step on the moon. The little girl from White Sulphur Springs who loved to count had helped the United States make world history. The U.S. was now the clear leader in the space race. Catherine admitted to being concerned about the return flight. If we were off by just a few feet or seconds, they were done for, she remembered. The astronauts wouldn't be able to return home. Catherine had no need to worry. Her calculations were as accurate as ever. The astronauts splashed down safely in the Pacific Ocean on July 24th, 1969. That was a good year. Man landed on the moon. Chapter 5 An Infinite Contribution. Catherine worked on every space mission at NASA until she retired in 1986. She had done extraordinary history making work while raising her family, dealing with the death of her first husband in 1956 and getting remarried in 1959. I found what I was looking for at NASA, said Catherine. Never did I get up and say, I don't want to go to work. Catherine received many honors for her contribution to the U.S. space program, including a flag that had gone to the moon 
A building has been also been named after her at Nassau's Langley Research Center in Hampton, Virginia. In 2015, she received the Presidential Medal of Freedom. It is the highest honor an American civilian can receive. Catherine was 97 at the time, an impressive number for a math lover. <laughs> Catherine's love of math led her to help make history for the space program, for women's rights, and for racial equality. Through it all, Catherine remained humble about her remarkable achievements. She liked to quote her father, who used to tell her and her siblings, you are as good as anybody, but you're no better. And here is Catherine receiving the Presidential Medal of Freedom from President Barack Obama. Catherine shared her father's saying with the many students she spoke to after she retired. She wanted to encourage young people the way she had been encouraged. She also told them, I like to learn. You can learn if you want to. Now that you've met Catherine Johnson, don't you want to learn as much about your favorite subject as you can? Catherine is proof that if you stay grounded in what you love, the places you go can be out of this world. There she is speaking to a body of students. And that is the end of the story, boys and girls. But wait, there's more. This just gives some more details about um, some different things that happen. So I want to thank you so much for tuning in and I hope to see you soon. Have a good one. Bye-bye.